Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram, and in this video I want to show you how to modify Razor to be able to seamlessly morph between a couple of different sounds uh, using a single XY panel element. And we'll end up with something that's a little bit like this. Okay, so the way this works is we have four buttons, one for each corner of the panel element, and by clicking that button, we can save the position of the eight knobs above our XY module. And then by clicking on that corner of the XY, we can recall the, that position of those knobs. And so I wanna show you how to do this beginning with a new copy of Razor. So let's open up a new copy. And uh, one of the first things we can do is to save our file uh, with a new name so that we don't mess up our copy of Razor. So let's go in and name this Razor Modify. Okay, and inside of the Razor instrument here, I'm going to create a new macro that holds all of our work for today. And we can begin by creating our panel elements, which are going to include the XY element and four buttons. I'm going to turn off the label on the XY make a few other slight edits and then we want four buttons and these are going to be of button type trigger which you can change in the function tab of properties let's go and select the trigger option and I'm going to name these buttons one through four And our simple macro that I created here is going to receive all four of the buttons and the X position and the Y position as inputs. And we'll create a macro that maps to one of the knobs that we want to control. So I can mention right now that you don't need to do this with Razor. You could choose another ensemble to modify like this, but Razor is kind of perfectly designed for it because we have these knobs on the B panel that are kind of designed to be used as modulators in this way. Okay, so this macro is going to control one knob that's being morphed. And we're going to use the four button inputs to read the current value of that knob. And say, hey, we want to save this value for later, basically. So we'll store the value of the knob in, in, a, in an, a value module and then trigger it using the button. And we'll use an IC receive to connect to the value module itself. All right, so that IC receive will eventually be receiving values from whatever knob we want to control with this macro. Now coming out of the value module, we want to use an IC send. So we want to get this value into another knob. Make sure you set your value module to mono. Create our, another, our extra knob here. And we're going to use the IC send in the connect tab of properties and say it connects to the knob using again the connect tab of properties all right so now we can duplicate this little setup here and the internal connection will be duplicated along with it so we can name this two and we'll see the ic send here is connected automatically to knob two and this one will be triggered by our second button so what we're doing here is basically we have four knobs being expanded out from our original knob and they can store four separate values 
and we'll use those four separate values to determine a new value depending on the x and y positions of the xy module. So let's create our four setups here. And then our new knobs that we've just created will all flow into a crossfade module. So the first thing we'll do is use the x-axis to crossfade between buttons 1 and 2 and buttons 3 and 4. And we can use a single crossfade module for this. We'll accept multiple sets of two inputs. And our two outputs um, can then be faded between using the Y position. Make sure you set these crossfaders to be linear in the um, function tab of properties. Otherwise, this won't really work very well. So next, I'll create the second crossfader and use the Y position to fade between All right, and so this is the new position that we want our knob to be at. So I'm going to use an IC send, and that IC send can connect to our original knob. Make sure you set everything in this macro to be monophonic, otherwise, otherwise things won't work properly. All right, so we want our IC receive here to be connected from, let's use our first oscillator knob to start. And then we want this first oscillator knob to receive from our IC send here. So you just have to make sure you make all these connections properly in the connect tab of properties, which is kind of tedious. And I'm going to spend the next few minutes doing it, which I apologize for, but it's just how it goes. So I'm just going to duplicate our macro here. And this macro is going to connect to our second knob. So our IC receive is receiving from our oscillator two knob which is receiving from our IC send. And the um, nice thing about this is we can just keep duplicating our original macro and making a few slight edits to our IC receive and send here. Um, nonetheless, it does, of course, become a bit tedious, especially if you make an error and you need to go back and correct each one of these copied macros one by one, kind of a pain. And now that I mentioned that, I actually think I forgot to set this second crossfader to linear. So let's go through and set all our crossfaders to linear, these second ones. And if you don't do this, the way the sign uh, crossfader works is it's just um, the transition feels like it happens very quickly with not a whole lot of intermediate spots. All right, so let's continue connecting our IC send and receive modules here. And today I'll end up with a total of eight of these macros, one for each of our knobs here. But as I was mentioning earlier, uh, you could really do this to any number of knobs in the ensemble, and Razor just makes a particularly good candidate because these knobs are very well designed to be modified in real time. Um, you just have to be careful when using this technique with other ensembles to make sure that the panel elements that you're controlling remotely are actually intended for real time use. Um, Usually they will be in a well-designed ensemble, but not always. So just keep an eye on that. All right, so once we get these eight macros up and running, I just want to make sure that they're working for some simple morphs. And uh, this current setup is not going to work properly with snapshots. So once I'm done with that, we'll take a minute to fix things up so that it will work with snapshots properly, which is fairly simple. All right, so at this point in time, we should be pretty much good to go.
Okay, by pressing position two, we can now recall these knobs by sliding the X, Y over. So what's wrong with snapshots is that all four of these buttons are going to send out a value when a new snapshot gets recalled. And then they're going to take whatever position the knob happens to be in then and save that immediately as the new position for all four of our buttons. And so that will immediately destroy the morphing because all four of the positions are going to be exactly the same value. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a snapshot value and I'm going to use the recall output to trigger a hold module. Hold module will state a value of 1 for 300 milliseconds and we'll use that output to control a router. So on a new snapshot this value is going to be equal to 1 for 300 milliseconds and then it's going to drop back down to 0. So all of our inputs here all of our buttons here are going to go into the zero output of a router and they can only pass through more than 300 milliseconds after a snapshot has been changed. And this will save us the uh, problem of having our snapshots delete all of our morphing capabilities. And once again, making all these connections is a bit tedious. We need a new router for each of our buttons, and each router needs to be connected to eight macros. So not my favorite sort of editing to do here, but it's something you're going to have to get used to if you want to do larger projects in Reactor. So. And everything kind of looks like a mess right now, but I am actually wiring this, so at the end of the day, everything is going to look pretty clean. Um, just line these routers up so that they're clean, and eventually we'll just move the macros up to line up with them. So yeah, just be very careful that all your button three routers get routed to the three inputs of the macros here because it's very simple to make a mistake that then is later on very hard to find. Alright, so once I have everything lined up here, um, I'm just going to take a moment to make sure that everything is working properly and um, that'll be it for this video. And in the next video I'm going to start talking about how we can automate this morphing process so you don't have to be dragging your mouse along the XY module. You can uh, use LFOs or envelopes to control the morph and hopefully, I haven't tried this yet but I'm confident it'll work pretty well, we can actually uh, set things up so that we can wire blocks to connect to this razor modification and use external blocks to control the morphing automatically for us. Right, so everything's wired up, and let's just um, try to make some sound. Of course, we need to actually store the position by pressing a button before morphing. All right, once again, this is Salamander Anagram. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back soon with some more tips on how to modify Reactor for easy morphing.